Eric Bowling did a rant at the end of his show last week where he basically argues that the GOP should never compromise with Democrats. But as you're listening here, try to keep up with the factual inaccuracies. He may break a record for most false statements in under two minutes. It's time to wake up, America. Time for big moons, time for painting in big, bold, conservative colors. No more squishy Republican pastels. The left and the Obama administration have had a sudden dramatic change of heart. Apparently, it's time to compromise. Compromise? Did they compromise on Obamacare? We didn't want it. The president and his majority forced that monster upon us. No compromise there. Did the president compromise when he opened the border for hundreds of thousands of illegal children, Central American kids, to make themselves at home here in America? Nope. It was his way or the highway. So let me get this straight. For six years, America's had the progressive agenda crammed down our throats, and now that the GOP has control over both chambers in Congress, President Obama, Val Jarrett, and their minions want to play ball with the right? Now Sorry, Democrats, you fumbled and the GOP recovered the football. Get the Keystone Pipeline legislation on the president's desk. Dare him to veto a bill that would create tens of thousands of jobs, reduce our energy costs, and create economic activity. Get a bill on his desk that allows corporations to repatriate $2 trillion in profits sitting in foreign bank accounts. Profits that were already taxed over there, let them simply bring it back here to spend and hire American workers and American technology. It's a $2 trillion stimulus package that cost the taxpayer zero. I've been pressing that proposal for eight years here at Fox, and there are very few who can find fault with it. Dare the president to veto that one and put up a legal immigration reform package that conservatives want. Emphasis on legal immigration. Veto that, Mr. President, and good luck to your 2016 Democrat pals. This is not a time for compromise. Conservatives have the ball. Time to run up the score. Don't spike the football, but damn, don't waste his majority. I can't get enough of that. After every rant at the end of his show, he has his goofball producer come in and pound him. Yeah, man, you nailed it with all those falsehoods. Jesus, I had trouble keeping up. I was writing as fast as I could, and I could barely keep up with all the nonsense that he was spewing. So, first of all, did the Democrats compromise? No, they never compromised. Now, all of a sudden, they want to compromise? They've been compromising from day freaking one. A third of the stimulus bill was tax cuts. That's nothing but a compromise. Obamacare, he actually, he actually mentions Obamacare. They didn't compromise on Obamacare. You idiot! Obamacare is a Heritage Foundation policy! They're a right-wing think tank. You know who originally proposed Obamacare? Richard Nixon. A very similar proposal. Then Bob Dole. Then the Heritage Foundation codified it and wrote policy papers about how that's their position. Then Chuck Grassley and Newt Gingrich in the 1990s supported that proposal as a counter to Clinton care at the time when they were trying to do health care reform. And then Obama, uh, think about it. The Democrats went from Medicare for all, they compromised. They negotiated down to a public option. And then they compromised and negotiated again down to Obamacare, your idea. And what does dumbass Eric Bowling say? They never compromised. The only compromise off their position twice. And how much movement did the Republicans make? None. Because they came to your fucking policy, your proposal. But see, this is the thing. A guy like Eric Bull, he just doesn't know anything. He doesn't know anything about politics. He doesn't know anything about the history of these different policies. So he's talking out of his ass. He acts like, uh, you know, Obamacare was originally proposed by Stalin, and then Obama picked it up and jammed it down our throats. Nonsense. The Democrats had a fucking supermajority at the time. If they wanted, they could have jammed through Medicare for all, but they didn't. They compromised with the Republicans two times and gave them exactly what the fuck they wanted. But Democrats don't compromise. Democrats don't compromise. Your party is the party that just broke the filibuster record under Obama. But Democrats don't compromise. Who are you kidding? You tried to repeal Obamacare 54 times, but Democrats don't compromise. Again, they don't know anything. You shut down the government when you didn't get your way like whiny little crybabies. Ted Cruz did it, but Democrats don't compromise? He's just such a child. He's such a child. And then he said, well, did, did Obama compromise on immigration? That's exactly what he did. Do you know nothing about the immigration proposal from the Democrats? For fuck's sake, it decreased the deficit. It had a 12-year waiting period. I mean, it put drones on the border. It increased border security. And you're acting like he didn't compromise? The entire bill was a right-wing bill by the time they were through. 
you can't argue with somebody who doesn't read the news. This guy doesn't read the news. He just talks out of his ass. And then um, he goes, we've had six years of progressive policies. <laughs> oh, please, please. I, I can't name five progressive policies that the Democrats have implemented since they've been in power. There's been a few. I mean, the environmental uh, regulations that Obama thankfully moved on. That's one. And I'm out. I don't know of any others. I can't name any others. I can't. Uh, maybe you could argue it's a stretch that so far he's protected Social Security. I mean, I guess maybe that's somewhat progressive, but not really because they haven't changed anything. Everything else has been a massive giveaway to the Republicans. We're exactly copying the Bush foreign policy at this point. How's this progressive? Progressive is non-interventionism. Bring back home the 900 military bases. Have we done that? No. We've increased our presence overseas. And then he goes, well, Keystone. But put Keystone on his desk and dare him to veto it. God, I wish I was president for a day. Put Keystone on my desk. See how fast I veto it. <laughs> it would be hilarious. It would be like, it'd be brunch. They'd have it on my desk. Like, okay, yeah, veto. Next. Anybody got some good pieces of legislation? Minimum wage increase? Anything? Something? I'd veto it so fast. I, my, my fucking signature would be half of it scribbles. Because I'm like, yeah, veto, veto, veto. God, he's so, and I hope Obama does it. Look, it's a toss-up. Obama might not veto Keystone if slash when they pass it. It's a toss-up. He may, he may not. I really don't know, but I hope he does. Uh, and he says it'll create 10,000 jobs. <laughs> you know how many permanent jobs it'll create? Less than 20. Creates less than 20 jobs, but permanent jobs. And at the same time, you're increasing, uh, you know, carbon and pollution spewing into the atmosphere. It's a horrible idea. It's a terrible policy. And you know who gets the money from that, right? The private companies. It's not like the American people get the money for our fucking oil. They give it right to the private companies. It's a horrible plan. And then the worst point of all that he makes, well, bring home the $2 trillion from overseas that's just waiting overseas. He goes, I haven't found anybody that's made a good case against this. You must know nobody who's smart. Seriously, nobody who's smart. You know what he's referring to? It's $2 trillion from tax-dodging multinational corporations. They send their shit to Bermuda and Ireland and all these places, and they just stash it there so they don't have to pay U.S. taxes. You haven't found anybody to make a good argument that they should fucking pay the taxes that everybody else has to pay? Why shouldn't they pay the taxes everybody else has to pay? He, go, he said, oh, they already paid it. No, they didn't. They paid fucking rates of 5%, 4% in the countries that they're storing it there to hide it from paying their taxes here. What do you mean we should bring back the $2 trillion? If you bring it back, it should be taxed like everybody else when they make money here. Why should you be able to make money in the U.S., put it overseas and then not pay taxes? So why can't I do the same thing? Okay, I'm going to take all my money and just put it overseas and then not pay any taxes. So I never have to pay any taxes. Boom, that's it. That's simple. That's how you escape all taxes. Just make money in the U.S., send it overseas, and then act like, what? I just didn't pay taxes. Who cares? That's fine, right? No, it's not fine. Everybody pays taxes. It, I love how, in his mind, yeah, the accountant, the construction worker, the teacher, you have to pay taxes. You pay taxes. But the corporations, no. Put $2 trillion overseas, and then we want to be able to bring it back here and pay nothing in taxes. God. <laughs> it's amazing how stupid he is. 